Hi, this is Lee Garrett and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. Today I'm covering an application that has recently made its way into my workflow to help with consuming written content. Now, Goodlinks has recently replaced Instapaper as my Read It Later application for a number of reasons, mostly down to its appearance, its ease of use and its deep shortcuts integration. It also syncs seamlessly on all of my devices and I'm very happy with how it works for me. So I thought I'd give you an overview. I'll be switching between macOS, iOS and iPadOS in this video to help show it on all platforms. And at the end, I'll be configuring a couple of shortcuts as well to show the kind of automation that Goodlinks is capable of. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that recently we've not been covering the pricing of applications in the videos themselves and instead have been using the show descriptions for these. However, Goodlinks does have a unique pricing policy that I wanted to cover. So firstly, it is a universal purchase, which is quite normal. So purchase it on one device and it's going to be available on all of them. And it's currently just under $10. Now it can run on iOS and iPadOS 15 or later and macOS 12 or later. However, if I click here on Goodlinks Premium, we get an explanation as to exactly what you buy when you buy the app. So when you purchase, you get a year's worth of free updates and feature releases and you're gonna keep hold of those forever. If, however, any features are released after the year has finished, then you're gonna to need to purchase another year's subscription to unlock. So it may be called a subscription, but you can stop after a year and always have those features that were released whilst you were subscribed. Anything else that's released afterwards, you're gonna to need to subscribe again. Now this page here does explain it nicely on the goodlinks.app website. So check it out if you're unsure. This is a pricing model that quite a few applications are starting to move towards. Let's take a look first at navigating good links on macOS. So I'll open it and let's see what we have. So on the far left, we have a sidebar that contains our lists and our tags. Then just click on the lists or tags to navigate through them. Then to the right of that, we have our list links. So all of the links that are contained within the list that you have sent to good links from your web browser or from another application. Now the number of links and how many unread ones is shown at the top. And then when you click on a link, you can read it in the larger pane, which is on the right there. Now you can hide the sidebars by clicking this button and then show them again. And you can also use keyboard shortcuts to do this. So control one, will show you just the reading pane. Then control two, will show you the list links and the reading pane as well. And then control three, of course, will show you all of them. So easy way to remember that. One for one pane, two for two, and then three for three. There is also a fourth pane hidden away, which I can click here to show. And this will give you a notebook that houses all of your notes and highlights because good links can also be used as a solid research tool now with its latest update. There is a shortcut for this as well, which is shift command and N. So that was Mac OS, but I think it's important to show on both iOS and iPad OS as well, because I use it equally on both. Now, of course, they're both pretty much exactly the same. So let's start with iOS on the right by opening the application. And this takes us into our list of lists and tags. So this is the leftmost one that we just saw on Mac OS. And then when you tap on a list, it takes us to the links within that list. So that's the next pane on Mac. And then tapping on an article will open it ready for reading. And it's a lovely format here, as we can see, it's nice and easy to digest. I can get to that notebook by just swiping to the left from the far right and then reverse that by swiping to the right from the far left. And I can do that again here to move to the list of links and again to get to the lists and tags. So it's very easy to tap to make your way around and then swipe to navigate between the different panes. Now, naturally, iPadOS is very similar. You just have more real estate to work with. And it's probably my favorite device actually for using good links because it combines both the space that I would have on the Mac alongside the ability to use my fingers to swipe my way around and navigate just like I can on the iPhone. It's all very easy. That's just a quick preview.